Here we are. You, you know, you know. I, I think it's so great that we're in church this morning. It's the first Sunday of the year. And I, I know a lot of people say it's not so much how you start, it's how you finish. And there's probably a lot of truth in that. But I also know that there's something powerful about what we put first. And so here we are in church on the first Sunday of the year. And let this lay a foundation for the year that God wants for you, for the promises that God has for you, for what is wrapped up in this year that God has laid up waiting for you. Here you are in church. Come on, somebody. I want to stir you up this morning and stir your faith for the promises that God has laid up waiting. Here you are putting God first. So let's put Him second and third and fourth and every day throughout the rest of this year. I don't know about you, you, but I'm all in to what God has for me in 2019. Anybody else all in this morning? So I want to go ahead and read out of the out of the Bible this morning. We're in church. That's a good thing to do. I'm ready to preach. I want to share a message with you this morning that I've just simply called waiting and walking, waiting and walking. I'm going to read to you out of Mark chapter number nine, verse 20. It says this. So they brought the boy But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. Somebody say, if you can. What do you mean if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. Come on, somebody. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, He rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear or speak, He said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as the people said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet. And he stood up. God, we thank You this morning for Your Word. We thank You this morning for Your presence and for Your power. And God, I thank You this morning for 2019, the greatest year that we've ever lived. God, I thank You for the promises that You have laid up waiting for us this year, for each and every person in this room. God, I pray that You would quicken to our spirits, Lord, the things that You have laid up for us this year. God, I pray that You would stir faith this morning. And God, I thank You that Your Word goes out. As it goes out, it would have accomplish everything for which you sent it. And somebody with faith shout a good amen. 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 Thank you guys. You can take a break. You can take a break. It's, It's the start of the year. And I don't know about you, but I love the start of anything. I love the start of something. I I, I remember in school, I, I always loved week one of semester. I loved it because every class you go into, the teacher would stand up and just begin to lay the vision out for everything you were going to accomplish that year. And that just excited me. Don't get me wrong. I was a normal student. By the time week three or four rolled around, I was as bored as anybody else. But week one, I loved it because it was the vision. Everybody's laying out the vision. And, And here we are at the start of another year. And I understand it's just a different day. It's just the changing of a calendar. And if you allow it to be no different than the day before, it will be no different. But there is something powerful about the start of a thing. Understand that God is the one who set up seasons and times and years. He is the one that set the world in motion. So I think there's something powerful about the start of a thing. And here we are at the start of a year, which means we're at the start of something full of promise and full of potential and full of opportunity. And it seems like the whole world at this time of the year is going ahead and making resolutions. Anyone made some resolutions? Anyone already broken that don't keep your hand up? Resolutions, that is you are setting the vision for how your life is going to be different this year. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with making decisions to say my life is going to be different this year because this or because that. And and, and those things are powerful and those things are wonderful. But the most powerful difference we can have is with Jesus right in the center of those decisions and those resolutions. 
What if, what if this was the year that you stepped into your dreams? What if this was the year that you broke free from those unhealthy patterns? What if this was the year you restored relationships or received your healing? Looking forward, what if this was the year in your walk of faith that you saw your promises come to pass? And it is so important In this walk of faith, it is integral in our walk of faith that we have as a foundation an understanding that God is good. If you've been in church more than about 10 seconds, you're going to know exactly what to do when I say, God is good. And all the time. Oh, I knew I was in church this morning. Come on, somebody. God is good. He really is good. And He is good all the time. All the time, God is good. But this story that we read here in the book of Mark shows us a different side of God. Now, God is good. I know God is good because God tells us that He is good. So God cannot be anything but good. But in this story, we find out that our good God is not always nice about being good. Like, what are you talking about, preacher? Understand, put yourself for a moment, put yourself in the middle of this story. You are a father. You bring your child to Jesus. You're a good father. You're a good, good father. Stop it. That's the right thing to do though. You're a father. Your child has a problem. You bring your child to Jesus. You have made the right choice. You have made the right move. That's good. You're a good father. And the moment this child comes into the presence of the king, this child who is possessed with an evil spirit, by the way, and the moment it comes into the presence of the king, the moment it steps into the presence of a greater authority, the child began to have a fit of sorts. But it's all good. Because there you are with God and God is good. God is good all the time. God is all powerful. He has power over all spirits, over all sickness, over all sin, over all disease, over death, over anything. God is good. He's got this. Got not a problem. You're in the presence of a much greater. God's got this. But then he doesn't. Because the child keeps having a fit. And the child keeps convulsing. And God, Jesus, does nothing. Told you, he's not always nice. Instead of helping out the child, Jesus decides now would be a fantastic time to strike up a conversation with the father. I don't know about you, but if I was the dad, I'd be like, stop talking, my child. But Jesus is just busy quizzing this dad about his theology. Let's have a discussion about theology then. Quick, Jesus, help the little child. No, 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 no. let's talk. So Jesus and the father begin conversing and the father asks Jesus for help. And then he says these words, if you can help me, if you can keep in mind, the child is still convulsing. But here we get to the crux of the conversation. Jesus says, what do you mean? If I can, anything is possible if a person believes. And that's the problem. The father, the Bible says, the father instantly cried out, I do believe. But help me overcome my unbelief. Somebody say waiting and walking. Waiting and walking. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. You see, this was the point that Jesus was trying to lead this father to. And we're going to come back to this point in just a moment because we have a problem. The child is still convulsing. And now Jesus has made the point that he's trying to make. And finally, the Bible tells us when the crowd had grown, Jesus rebuked the spirit. And at this point, the boy was set free. Now understand, and this is a side point, it's not really my sermon, but understand it's important you understand this and notice this. There was no battle. There was no fight. There was no wrestle. There was a simple rebuke and the boy was set free. That should tell you something. That the God you serve is greater than, is higher than, is stronger than, is more powerful than anything you may be facing. And not just a little bit more powerful. God is up here. The enemy is down there. God is so much greater than anything you could possibly ever face. It's not a wrestle. It's not not even a fight. In a moment. This boy was set free. But back to what Jesus is trying to teach this father. Somebody say waiting and walking. 
You see, this, this story represents so much to us on our journey of faith. And the man, the father, recognises something that sometimes many of us may struggle to recognise in our own life. See, unbelief is not the enemy of faith. Doubt, doubt, can be an, doubt is not the enemy of faith. Fear can be an enemy. The enemy, of course, is an enemy. But unbelief, doubt, is simply something that must be overcome on our journey of faith. This father recognised that he had faith and unbelief at the same time. He had enough faith to come to Jesus in the first place. But he also had enough unbelief to question Jesus' ability or willingness when he got there. And doesn't this describe us and our journey as well? That here we are beginning 2019 with the promises of God fresh in our mind. And we begin on our journey with our God who is good and He is good all the time. And then all of a sudden February rolls around and a bill comes in. Or maybe we get later on in the year and somebody in our family receives a diagnosis and maybe we make our way to July and we're sitting next to someone and they receive their breakthrough before we do. And we went through 21 days of prayer and fasting and we prayed 20 minutes a day and they didn't even pray five minutes a day and they still got their breakthrough before I did. What do you mean God? And all of a sudden, there we are. Of course, we still believe in God. Of course, we're still coming to church. Of course, we still have faith. But now our unbelief also has an opportunity to flourish. Is God really bigger than that bill? Is God really greater than that diagnosis? Does God really love me enough if that person received their miracle first? If that person left me, is God going to leave me as well? And all of a sudden, our faith is there. Of course, it's there. But our unbelief. Do we believe God is who He says He is? Do we believe it for us? Because it can be easy to believe it for someone else. But we live with us. We know the size of our bills. We know the depth of our sin. We know the reality of our diagnosis. And what this all comes down to is what will we allow to speak to us the most? The things we see, the things we feel, the things we experience, things in the natural. The Bible would say it like this. We walk by faith and not by sight. Will we allow the multiplicity of things going on around us to dictate our faith to us or will we stand firm upon the Word of God? Can we go deeper? Are you still with me this morning? Come on, say it with me. Say waiting and walking. walking. Say it like you know where I'm going. Say waiting and walking. You see, this father in Mark chapter 9 had enough faith to go to Jesus despite what his natural circumstances were saying. His son was sick. The diagnosis was bad. But he still had enough faith to go to Jesus. But this is where it gets crazy. When the father shows up with his convulsing son, Jesus does not seem at all unsettled. He is not rushed. He's not rattled. He's not stressed. He's not even in a hurry. It's almost as if he knows something that no one else knows. That this is the good God that we serve. We know He is good, but we don't know why Jesus delayed in responding. And this father was walking through life, walking through day after day, but he was also waiting on Jesus. You see, in this life of faith that God has for us, in this year of 2019, we are called to both walk in the direction of our destiny while we also wait upon the Lord. And there will be plenty of things and plenty of people and plenty of circumstances that will try and distract you and discourage you from your walking and from your waiting. But we must keep on walking while we are waiting on God. If we rely simply on our own understanding, on our own three or four pound brains sitting up here in this head of ours to figure out everything we go through in life, then we are confining ourselves to the natural. But what if this year we step beyond the natural to the supernatural? What if this year we stepped into faith beyond the sight of what we can see in the natural? A life of faith is not always a life of understanding. We don't always understand the things we go through. But that is faith. Trusting that God is who He says He is. 
Trusting that he can do what he says he can do. That if God promised it, then I believe it. That his promises are yes and amen. That nothing is too hard for him and trusting that he knows what he's doing. I feel like I, feel like I need some help illustrating this this morning. I'm going to ask Junior. Junior, can you give it up for Junior as he comes? What a man of God. I... Uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a keyboard before. A keyboard is, is you know, about this long. It's got the white keys and the black keys and, and, and it's got 88 different keys on them. But I don't know if you knew this, but a keyboard actually only has 12 notes. 12 notes. And they just repeat. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. They just repeat. There's only 12 notes that exist. Can you do me a favor and play those 12 notes for me? There they are. Not very impressive. Once upon a time, so that's what you call a chromatic scale. Once upon a time, somebody decided, you know, if you want music to sound nice, we should put it in something that someone called a major scale. Can you do me a favor? Play a major scale. Fancy. It goes up and comes down. Now, a major scale only has seven notes. The problem is, if you don't know exactly how they fit together, these seven notes It's not going to sound very good. Come on church, let's worship. Hallelujah here below. (laughs) Ain't nobody worshipping to that. Now I I know how to play a little bit of piano. But if I was to stand up there and play piano this morning, after about five minutes, I'd run out of things to do. So I I, I can do it a little bit. But when you have a a master on the piano, like Junior over there, who knows how notes fit together, all of a sudden, those notes can begin to transport you somewhere. When he knows when one note fits with another note and how to put them all together, it's only seven notes that he's playing. That's all he's got to work with. But all of a sudden, we are transported somewhere because he knows how they all fit together. He knows what order they go in. He knows when to put this one in and when to put that one in. He sits above it all and knows exactly how to fit them together. But isn't that just like God? You got the same 12 months I've got. You got the same 365 days I've got. And if you put them together in the wrong order, and if you try and jump ahead to here and go back to there and put them all, but when you know that you've got a master who sits above it all and understands how it all fits together, that he knows the end from the beginning, that he is the same yesterday, today and forever, that he's good today, he's gonna be good tomorrow, that it doesn't matter what it looks like when you're in the middle of it all, cause you know by the time you get to the end, it's all gonna fit together. keep playing you're taking us somewhere I I, want to just I want to show you one more way you know I I read this poem and I actually read it while I was on the way home from my last trip here a few months ago and and I wanted to share this poem with you this morning I think we're going to have it up on the screen and I'm just going to go ahead and read it off the screen here there it is so there's a gap in the middle they're two halves so I'm just going to read it for you it says this it says God doesn't love me You can't force me to believe that God is good. This is the one truth in life. This world is a product of chance. How can I believe that God will use my life? I know with certainty that God has left me. Never again will I say that Christ is risen from the dead. I know now more than ever in my life that man can save himself top of the next bit. We must realize that it is ignorant to think that God answers prayers. Christians, declare that without God, this world would fall into darkness, but this world can and will meet my needs. It is a lie to say that God has always been there for me. I now realize that no matter what I do, the truth is He doesn't love me. How can I presume that God is for me? Here I was preaching, trying to build your faith 
You should see your faces right now. What is this preacher talking about? You put that, put that poem back up, you see, because maybe as we're going through this year, in January, you might feel that God doesn't love me. In May, you might feel that I know with certainty God has left me. In August, you might realize that it is ignorant to think that God answers prayers. And as you go throughout this year, sometimes you may feel this way. Sometimes you may feel like you don't know what God is doing, what God has for you, that the promises God spoke to you about in January, how could they possibly come true in the middle of October? when you're walking through what you're walking through. But the Bible says, thank God. The Bible says that we have a God who knows the end from the beginning. And maybe, just maybe, if God is a God who knows the end from the beginning, that if we start at the end, that we know that God is for me. How can I presume that He doesn't love me? The truth is that no matter what I do, I now realise that God has always been there for me. It is a lie to say that this world can and will meet my needs. Without God, this world would fall into darkness. Christians declare that God answers prayers. We must realise that it is ignorant to think that man can save himself. I know now more than ever in my life that Christ is risen from the dead. Never again will I say that God has left me. I know with certainty that God will use my life. How can I believe that this world is a product of chance? This is the one truth in life. God is good. You can't force me to believe that God doesn't love me. Can you take a moment, church, and just give God a praise all over this room? Come on, stand to your feet this morning and just give Him a thanks. Give Him a praise. Woo! You see, understand this. Unbelief. Unbelief is not an enemy to your faith. You can stay standing. You can have faith and unbelief at the same time. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Why was Jesus simply standing there with the Father, having a conversation with Him instead of helping in the situation? It's because He knew the end from the beginning. He already knew how that story was going to finish up. He knew it was already done. And just because the Father couldn't see it yet, and just because you can't see it yet, doesn't mean it hasn't happened. And I'm here to declare to you this morning that it is already done. 2009. God's promises, they are yes and amen. They are already done. And in our spirit, we got to believe. We got to keep on believing that we are walking forward into the promises of God and we are waiting faithfully for the miracle working power of God to do what only He can do. All over this room, I'm wondering if you could join me. Just close your eyes. I would have the faith to believe this morning that every single person in this room has a dream in their heart. I know because the Bible tells us that there are promises of God over each and every one of us. But I wanted to come with a word of faith this morning. I wanted to come with a word to stir your faith this morning that it doesn't matter what you may face this year. Doesn't matter what it may look like this year. That when you're in the middle of it, understand that you serve a God who knows your end from the beginning and your latter days will be greater than your former days. That He is taking you from glory to glory. That He is taking you from faith to faith. That He is taking you from strength to strength. And I'm here to declare over your life this morning that by the time 2019 comes to an end, that you will be stronger then than you are now that you will be greater then than you are now, that you will be more faith-filled then than you are now. So all over this room, I'm wondering if you could join me, every person, would you pray after me? Say, God, today, today, I dedicate dedicate my year to you. you. God, today, today, I open up my heart to you. I, I open up my life to you. I open up my life to you. Would you come and fill me? Will you come and fill me? With the vision. With the, vision. With the promises. With the promises. That you have for me. That you have for me. And Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit. When life gets difficult. When life gets difficult. When the storm comes this year. When the storm comes this year. Would you go ahead and remind me? Would you go ahead and remind me? That you already know. That you already know. My end. My end. 
from my beginning that you are a God who is good and good all the time. And church, if you believe that this morning, would you go ahead and give God some praise right now? Come on, just shout a praise all over this place. He is good and He is good all the time. He knows your end from your beginning. His promises are yes and amen. All over this room, I'm wondering one more time if you could close your eyes because there's one final prayer that I want to pray. All over this room, there are people here and you've come into church this morning. Perhaps someone invited you. Perhaps you were driving past and you just wanted to come in and check out what was going on. Maybe you're here for the first time. Maybe you've come a hundred times. But there are people here this morning and you know in your heart that you're not right with God. The Bible says that if you have Jesus, you have life. But if you do not have Jesus, you do not have life. Friend, not not the life that God created you for, not the life that God has redeemed you for. You see, Bible says in John 3:16 a verse that so many of us would know. It said that God loved the world so much. That's you. God loved you so much. He loved me so much that he sent his one and only son that whoever should believe in Him. Thank God it says those words. It doesn't say behave in Him. It doesn't say perform in Him. It doesn't say pay in Him. Thank God, because someone will behave better than I will. Someone will perform better than I can. Someone can pay more than I can pay. But the Bible simply says, for those who believe in Him, we all can do that. Those who believe in Him shall not perish, but would have eternal life. Friend, if you're here this morning and you're not right with God, it will be our greatest honour and privilege on this very first Sunday of 2019 to stand with you, to pray with you and to introduce you to your Saviour. He's our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So all over this room with no one looking around, no one moving around. If you're here today and you're not right with God, maybe you never have been. Maybe once upon a time you were, but right now you've slidden back out of relationship with Him. Or maybe you're here today and you're just not sure. Friend, if that's you today, would you do me a favour and let me know who I can pray for just by raising your hand. Once I've seen it, you can put it down. Thank you, sir. Come on all over this room. Thank you over there. If you need Jesus today, if you're not right with God, just slip your hand up high, high above your head. Once I've seen it, you can put it down. Awesome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. So good. Come on all over this room. Yep. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Right up the very back. God bless you. Come on, people all over this room are getting right with God today. Come on, friends, somebody here, your heart is beating 100 miles an hour. It's the love of God knocking on the door of your heart today. Would you respond to Him in this place? As I ask one more time, just as I look over this room, if you're not right with God, come on, the last five seconds, if that's you, just slip your hand up high in the air. Once I've seen it, you can put it down. Five more seconds. Awesome. God bless you. So good. Well, church, all over this room, if you raised your hand up, I told you that it would be our greatest privilege and honour to stand with you and to pray with you today. But rather than me coming around and praying with you each individually, that would take a long time. I'm going to ask you if you could do me a favour, just as the team leads us in this song. Would you step out of your seat and come and meet us down the front here? Come on, church. If you need Jesus, you come to love. Come on, sing it as you come, church. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those who've come today. 
And I thank you, Lord, that it was your will before the foundations of the world were formed that we would go to heaven. Lord, you predestined every one of us to go to heaven. But you also gave us a free will because you love us and you didn't want us to be robots. Today, Lord, my friends at this altar said, I'm going with God because I choose to go with God. I pray in this moment that you would bring your forgiveness and your deliverance to their life today. I want everybody in this room to pray this prayer out loud with me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I've, sinned. I've sinned. I'm not proud of I'm it, proud but I admit it. Today, 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 I lay my sin lay down. My sin Take, down. It, I Take it, I pray. I don't want it anymore. I, don't want it anymore. I reach to heaven reach to, heaven. to receive receive your forgiveness to take the place of my sin I ask that you would accept me Lord into your wonderful family today Jesus I give my life completely to you I'm yours Jesus hallelujah amen come on put your hands together church hallelujah